Chapter 13 of The Wise Enchanter. Now they'll be looking for the letter M. Michael was the first to notice how the landscape was changing as they walked. The trees thinned out until the whispering woods were gone and the ground became hard and arid. In the distance beyond dusty hills and mounds loomed a magnificent mountain range. It looks like India, Rukmini said. No, it's like Scotland, Laura said. Lauren said. It's like America for sure, Michael said. It's definitely more like Africa than anything I've seen, said Sipho. When they stared at the mountains in the distance, the children felt like they each knew the mountains from some long forgotten time. And they walked faster to reach the foothills as though they were expecting to find something there. After a while, a little white goat wandered out of nowhere into their midst. A mountain goat, Sipho said. This must be Africa. Meh, said the goat. Meh. The dormouse poked his head out of the bag where everyone believed he was fast asleep. Nope, he's not one of the talking animals. Let's move on. But the goat went up to Sipho, grabbed Sipho's clothes in his mouth, and pulled him toward a mound of earth. And there he began to bleat until Sipho held out his hands to the goat and spoke. What is it, little goat? You may not be a talking animal, but what do you want to show me? Meh, meh, said the goat, and jerked its head in the direction of the mound. He wants me to see something, Sipho said, and went where the goat pulled him. Then he knelt down in front of the goat and held out his hand. The goat pushed his hand with its nose until it was pointing at the mound. All the children noticed the mound at once. They saw it because it moved. And when they looked at it more directly, they saw that it looked amazingly like a giant pair of lips. And that the mountains in the distance looked like a giant nose and giant sleeping eyes and the giant lips were indeed moving because they spoke. Mmm, said the huge mouth, and the sound was like the deep, satisfied rumbling and mumbling of earth and rocks. The ground seemed to tremble beneath the children's feet. When they looked around, the goat had wandered off. Many moons have gone by since any children have made such a journey. You know this. Most of the time, no one makes it as far as the enchanted islands. Now you have come far, right inside the Isles of Imagination. Mm. May my words go deep into all your hearts. I am the mountain, the mountain of all mountains. I must mention the monster. His name I cannot name, but the warmth and light in the world is fading. When you require courage, look into your magic book. I have made myself there and I will warm you so that deep in your hearts you may feel my might. Take the might of mountains and make it your own and you will feel immense. Hold tight to the magic gemstone. It means more than you know. As the mountains spoke the last words, it seemed to breathe a sigh, which became a gust of wind so strong that it blew the children over earth rumbled and shook and great cracks appeared. Out of two enormous cracks, two tall trees grew. The children stumbled toward the trees as huge clouds rolled in overhead and it began to rain. It rained so hard that the children could see almost nothing. And then just as suddenly as the rain had appeared, it stopped. A bright rainbow shone in the sky. The dry ground had turned to mud with new shoots of green grass poking through it. Open the magic book, Michael said. Sipho unpacked it and unwrapped it, and they all bent over to see what the mountain had magically made. And there he was, the mountain with the mouth and the distinctive shape of the mountains in the distance. Hmm, Sipho said. Magnificent courage spread through all their hearts, making them all feel warm inside. The mountain's mouth is like a small M, Lauren said, and the mountains in the distance are a marvelously large M. It must be magic. 
Oh, Rukmini, do you know where my gemstone is? We mustn't lose it. The mountain said so. Whoa. Now, I find this a little hard to see, but maybe if you look at it, here's the little mountain goat. Here are the lips that have made the small M. And here is the giant M. You see how this kind of looks like a nose? There's the trees that sprouted in the cracks. I hope you were able to see the M. Next, we'll move on to chapter 14.